Today we are going to talk about Kobe and Backup. Alright, to download it, it's another free application. Go to Google, type in Kobe and C O B I A N, and then Backup. Hit enter. And then uh, right here on download.cnet.com is where I recommend downloading it from. Go ahead and click on that link. The page will load. Click on download now. And then a box will pop up asking save. You go ahead and save it. Um, I already have the file and installed it, so I don't need to save it. But you save it, download it, go ahead and install it. Once you install it, then it's going to look like this window here and it's a uh, backup program real basic backup program pretty much grabs all your files and dumps them into another location either on the same hard drive or a different hard drive I recommend putting it to a, to a different hard drive because that's the whole purpose of a backup is backup somewhere else so that way you have it in more than one place that's what a backup is is having your data in more than one place I recommend you should I recommend backing your data up to two or three or four different places if you can if possible and this would be your important stuff this doesn't need to be your whole hard drive your whole terabyte or three terabyte hard drive it doesn't need to have your windows files nothing like that pretty much all you need to back up is your pictures documents music and sometimes even music now you don't need to back up because if you purchase all of your songs to iTunes you can re-download any songs that you may lose um, as long as you purchase the song through iTunes you can restore your songs which is a pretty cool feature um, I'm trying to think what else would you save pretty much just your documents and pictures music and home videos if you have home video store on your computer um, that's pretty much the main stuff you need to back up and then username and passwords I know you should back that up and then you should also back up your emails but the really the main ones were documents pictures videos and music alright so once you got the program installed installed here uh, you wouldn't have any of these icons here this is different backups you set up but uh, you start off by clicking on task click on new task pop ups, pops up a window you can name the task whatever you like so you can name it as whatever home media and this is just gonna back up all your videos uh, and music and pictures so then here you have to read these boxes here uh, you want to include the subdirectories which means it's gonna go into the folders and copy the stuff that's in the folders as well not just the folder so make sure that box is checked um, create separate backups using timestamps. This is up to you if you want to do this. So every time it does a backup, it will put a different timestamp on. So it'll have like, if it starts backing up right now, it put on the time and the date, and then it will dump everything into that folder. Or you can have it put everything into the same folder each time it does a backup, and then if it's a full backup or incremental, it will it will put the stuff in like if it's a full back backup it will take out the stuff that's changed and put the new stuff in which is pretty cool or same with incremental it'll leave it in there for a while and then depending on how you set it up it will delete after a few days and then those files will be gone so that's up to you if you want to check this box or not you could try it both ways and see what you think um, use file attribute logic you're going to want to leave that checked as well and use volume shadow copy I recommend leaving that checked as well and then the backup type you have full, incremental, differential, and dummy. Uh, I re I recommend doing a full, like if you do a lot of computer data, making a lot of data on your computer. I recommend doing a full backup, at least once a week. And then the other days you're not doing a full backup. I recommend doing an incremental backup. That way you never lose any data except maybe that one day when your computer crashed so you have all your previous data from all the days before that's the way I recommend going if you only use your computer like a couple times a week just go on the internet check the email surf the internet I uh, you can get away with doing a full backup once a week is probably good you don't need to do incremental then um, I want to do incremental by itself because it only copies to save the stuff that's been changed it doesn't grab any of the other stuff that hasn't been changed so it's only stuff that you just added that it puts in otherwise it doesn't 
it doesn't copy anything over. If you do an incremental, if you put an incremental, you can have it set to do a backup or a full. You can make it do a full backup every so many incremental backups. So you can have it say, well, it does. How about after four incremental backups, then it'll do a full backup. So then your hard drive is being backed up completely, which is a good idea. Um, and then once you figure out what you want to do there, I'm going to leave it as full. Then you want to go to File, so it should be on the left here. And then you have a source and your destination. And in your source here, you can open up Computer. And then you can drag any files, right, if you move it over here, you can drag any files and drop them into this source. And same with the destination, you, you select with files or folders, and you drop them into the destination. And then your source is what files you want to be backed up, and your destination is going to be where they're going to be saved to. So you want to save it to like an external hard drive, a flash drive, or a thumb drive, whatever you call it, um, to a server. If you click on add here, you can do the same thing. You can pick the directory, pops up, select a directory, or you could do add FTP. You can set up an FTP so you can have it backed up to online, but be careful with that. Um, if you up, if you back it up to online, make sure where you're backing it up to is secure and encrypted so nobody can hack in and get your data. And then I can still do it manually, manual destination, so you can type it in. And then for the source for what files you want to back up, you can select just a specific file. You can do a whole directory. You can do FTP again, so you can back up your server right to your computer, or FTP right to your computer, or you can do a manual on that as well. And then you can click and edit them any time, and click delete if you want to delete anything. And then the next tab here on the left is schedule. So you set up when you want to do it. You could do it once, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, timer, or manually. You set it up however you want. Then you, you check the days you want it to back up. You set a time. Um, and depending on what you choose, these other windows will light up or fade away as they are. Then the next one here is archive. You can set up compression, so it puts into a zip or 7z compression or have no compression depending on how much space you have if you have limited space for your backups you can set up an encryption here which is pretty nice so if you back up to online you can have it encrypted before you back it up online so that way if anybody gets your data either off your web server or your company server your home server they can't see anything that you have backed up as long because it's encrypted as long as you do a good encryption with a good encryption password and if you use a public key um, and then there's the next one down is exclusions you can have it do only certain files so it'll copy all these types of files so you can have it set as only backup by JPEGs only backup by zips only backup EXE files whatever you want certain extensions um, and then there's also an exclusion, so you can say, well, I want you to back up everything on the computer except for .zip, which is .zip, or everything but .exe, so stuff like that. And then also, the next one on the left here is events. Before, there's a pre-backup events and a post-backup events. Pre-backup events, you have it, you can have your computer do something before it starts to back up, like you can have it scan your computer for viruses, or you can have it do a uh, defrag of the comp of the hard drive, stuff like that, or have it run a specific program before it does this, and then after, and then the other one post backup events, you can have it do something after it backs up. So say after it backs up, then you want it to defrag your C drive or whatever drive you just backed up everything from. You can have it defrag that hard drive, or you can have it you can have it defrag the hard drive you're backing everything up to or you can have it delete files or whatever you want there's all sorts of options if you click on add all sorts of stuff you can do and then there's a box you can check here it says abort the task if there are any errors so if it comes across an error if you have this box checked it will still do your backup which is nice and then same do not execute if pre if pre events fail so if your events failed before the backup then your events after the backup won't run if you check this box as well, which is pretty nice. And then the last one here on the left, it says advanced. 
it says a couple of different boxes you can check and uncheck and then you can even do it as a run as you can run it as a different user like if you're not the administrator and you want to have it back up as the administrator which is the best way to do it have it do a backup from the administrator then you could do it this way so if you have four or five or six users you'll make sure that it's backing up through the admin account and they'll back up everything that needs to be backed up once you do that you click OK and then you select on the well, you can click on the backup and then it shows the information here on the right otherwise you can click on task and hit run all tasks now or hit control B does the same thing and it'll go through and show the progress bar down here at the bottom one shows you the full operation and one shows you the section of backup it's doing you can pull up the history you can pull up a log and see make sure everything's going good and there's no errors and if there's errors you can go and do your corrections like it says it can do move or copy some system file you can go into the exclusions like I showed you and you can add that exclusion in so it doesn't try to back that up next time so then you won't have errors and then have it take longer to do the backup and then once you're done you just hit the X and then when you did the install it said to auto start with all users you can set that or you can have it set for certain users always you go to preferences and you can have it set to do that have it auto start forever you want and then it just shows up in the bottom of your screen in the task bar and then you're all set you don't have to worry about it again or back up at all at those times that you have it set scheduled for and that's it easy basic program program I like and it's free it works better than a couple of paid programs have used in the past have a great day I hope it helped please leave comments subscribe if you uh, in, this, in the comments if you'd like to see any other videos or tutorial videos just let me know or send me uh, drop me an email thanks have a great day